The following is a video interview by the World Socialist website with the family of Catherine Pace, one of several Detroit auto workers who contracted COVID-19 and succumbed to the deadly disease in March 2020 after working at the Warren Truck Assembly Plant in suburban Detroit. The Pace family wants answers and to hold the corporation Fiat Chrysler, now Stellantis, accountable for its criminal negligence. The interview includes Catherine's husband, James Pace, and two of her children, Monica and Jamal. The family is interviewed by James Brewer, a WSWS reporter, and myself. I wanted to start by thanking you all for sharing your story. It's a really tragic event for you and your family, and this is an issue that's faced by, unfortunately, by many families. The COVID death toll in the United States is well over a million. So it's very important that you're telling your story. I think there will be a very wide interest for it. Can you tell the story from your standpoint of the experience of that period? She came home from the doctor and she said the doctor said she had pneumonia. She felt good. You know, we just had a little call. The next day, I got worried. She didn't feel good. So I called my other daughter, Latanya, that lives across the street. I said, come check on your mother. She came over, she checked on her mother. And she said, well, I'm, I'm going to call our primary doctor, Dr. Husson. And Dr. Husson told her to uh, use her breathing machine. And that went on for, for two days. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, she told me to go and get a prescription and drop it off. So I did that. And me and my uh, my friend, we were sitting in the driveway talking. I heard Amless, a fire truck. And I kept listening to it, and it got closer and closer. And I told him, I said, somebody in the neighborhood that got sick. And uh, I looked up the street, and I saw the uh, fire truck on the corner. And it turned coming down the street towards me. And I... Uh, I, I looked at him. I said, dog, there's somebody in this block. And they came over and went in the house. And you know, I passed one of the, the technicians going out the door. And when I came back to the dining room, Tanya, she said, she gone. I said, well, they, they took out the side door. She said, no, daddy, mama gone. I said, Tanya, what you mean she gone? She said, mama dead. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And they told me, came up to me, I had to leave because they had to get her ready to go. And I just couldn't, I, it's hard for me to believe it now. We've been married this year be 49 years. So you had no preparation that she had a serious uh, Ill illness. Uh, I never flew. No, we had no indication, just besides like everyone else, just keeping up with the news. And that prior week, um, when they mostly started talking about it around that 17th, that was her actual last day at work because on the 18th, they called them off. They sent them a message all out to not to return back to work. So the 17th of March was her last day. Her union steward passed on the 25th and then she passed on the 27th of March. And both of them worked in the paint department. By April, they had at least 17 that was supposed to have passed in the paint department. Jesus. Incredible. Yeah. And one of the girls that was, uh, I knew it worked with my, my wife. She kept me up informed. She still keep me up informed about what's going on. And she had called me and told me about the other people had passed in that department. They don't know what they're going to do. If they're going to walk off, uh, just keep trying to work. I told him, I said, 
do what's best for y'all. If you feel this is endangering your life, like, like my wife's, walk off. Because they, your life means more than that job, dude. And it was like a lot of people that didn't didn't even go back. That was in May. Right. That was when they were all forcing them to go back in May. Yeah. Because I know some people that was even they took every opportunity they can to not to go back in the plant because even if their department was next to the pay department, they were next to be forced to be switched over to the pay department because they were short staffed. Mm -hmm. So right. they was at the options of you either go be transferred to the pay department or you lose your job. Wow. Yeah. And a lot were still afraid to even go that worked in the paint department. And, and I think it's a lot with the ventilation. Mm. It has to be something with their ventilation system that opts out that they can't control certain things. That's a very important point, Monica. You know that this was the old paint shop. The company has invested, you know, millions in building a new paint shop. But that's a very good point. I mean, why was the center of the spread and the deaths in this paint shop? That's something that what was the ventilation? Mm -hmm. you know, presumably yeah. they're more concerned about you know the paint on the cars than they were about the uh, the lives of the yeah. workers i understand Catherine was getting ready f for retirement is that right yes she was due to retire in june mm. and how many years did Catherine have inside the um i think it was like 15 she went there 2007 i believe mm-hmm yeah, because she started as a temp and she accepted an offer for full time. Mm -hmm. And she was over, I think, since 2007. Mm -hmm. How did you get your information about how many people were getting infected and the conditions inside the plant? Were you informed? It was uh, um, social media. Uh, a lot of it was a lot of the Chrysler employees that was connected to us. We, um, a lot of her co-workers that knew us, that still communicated with us doing after her death, they would notify us on things um, like I said, social media, the news, because it, it had gotten to where I don't watch the news. And especially during that time, I had to tell my dad, can you please stop watching? Because every, every day he's keeping up with the number of deaths. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, you know, Kat was uh, deaf number 675. And he's like, now they're at nine, you know, 730 now. And I'm like, you're just going to wear you out, mm. you know, but being able to see it on social media or, as I said, on the news or just by people that are working at, at the actual plant. There's uh, evidence um, directly uh, that President Trump had had a discussion with the president of China who explained that how deadly this disease was, and that it traveled through the air, through airborne particles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of like, you know, if like smoke remains in the air, well, mm -hmm. you know, these particles of COVID remain in the air for a, a substantial amount of time. The major way to um, prevent the transmission is to prevent a situation where people are close, working close enough with each other you know, especially a factory where mm -hmm. workers have to shout over the sounds of machinery and that casts that casts the airborne particles even even further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the government was aware, not only Trump, but the, the, they briefed the, the U.S. Congress, the Democrats, as well as the Republicans. They were aware as early as uh, February how this disease was uh fundamentally transmitted yes and yet they kept the factories open they kept the schools open right that's right because they were concerned about keeping production and profits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the timeline is very important because it, there was a walkout at the Windsor Chrysler plant on March the 12th. Then on March the 16th, the workers at the Warren truck paint shop walked out. Mm -hmm. You said that, Catherine, the last day of work was the, 
the 17th for yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that very day on the 17th, the workers at the Kokomo Tipton plant stopped production. And that very night, the UAW was discussing with management, not the, clo not the closure of the plants, but rolling closures. That is just partial, limited closures. Of course, yes. you know, COVID doesn't, it doesn't care if it's, you know, you shut down on a Tuesday and Wednesday, it's going to be back on a Thursday. And it's going to roll right with you. It's going to roll right with you. And, but that very night, when the UAW was negotiating to have these partial roll downs, the workers at the Sterling Height assembly plant marched out of the plant. I had someone that worked at that plant at that time and they got transferred to Warren. Right. Then the next morning on the 18th, the morning ship at Shap walked out. The workers at Jefferson North assembly plant walked out. Mm -hmm. The workers at the Toledo Jeep plant walked out. And it was then that the auto companies and the UAW announced the closing. Yeah. So this was the initiative entirely of workers concerned, you know, not with the profits of the company, but protecting the lot their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was entirely the workers who did this. Yeah. And uh, you know that that how many lives were saved by the fact that workers forced the. The, the stopping of the transmission inside yes. the plants and also the schools. Mm -hmm. Management in the UAW did not inform the workers of the dangers. No, they no. just took it as, oh, uh, this is a common cold. You know, this is just something we just going to be able to, you know, see what we can do to clean it up and, and get the lines back going. Mm. Well, you said that the workers were keeping you, you informed and also through social media. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, because it was we can find our stuff on social media that's going on. They're actually, especially with the um, the um, social media links that they have for the Christ employees to communicate e with each other. Then they're they're open to discuss what's going on inside of um, from the how hot it is in the plant that day to not want to go to work to what's actually going on in the plant to say I'm not going in or I'm going in. And especially with the corona, with COVID, oh yes, that was a big hot topic, you know, that you can find on social media for them to be saying, you know, who was sick that day, how many was sick in their department, who left, you know, who passed that day. It, it was nothing for you to find that on social media. What did you hear from the company about uh, Catherine's death. What what any information were you given about how she contracted the disease? Was there ever an acknowledgement that the source of it was inside the factory? Nothing. No, nothing. No one has ever contacted us since her death. Mm -hmm. or, no. or Chrysler, UAW, none of them. No one has contacted us, contacted us. I don't even. Did you receive a letter from them or something to say? No. Sorry for your condolences. Mm, I don't remember receiving that. I mean, why do you think that they never acknowledge their responsibility? Money. Money. If they acknowledge it, it opened up. With crashing mm, loss, I think it would be. I think it would be lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit. They they probably go broke. You know, especially now. Accountability is needed to be taken for it. Because I said, it's just been swept up under the, the rug for the last two years because no one has said anything about it. What this pandemic has, you know, has shown is that in the eyes of the powerful corporate and political interests, you know, workers' lives mean nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, yeah. and, and, and it's, it's at the point of, like you were saying earlier, Jerry, that if it's not for if the workers don't take charge and put in demands to say, OK, we're not going into work or we're not going to show up or do opposite of what they ask them to do, then it, it'll stay the same. Because as we're saying, they're just using it as a band-aid to say, well, let's put this band-aid on this big patch hole 
and let's make sure we still get the workers to come in and let's make sure we get the, the production done and accounts up because we still have money to be made. We can't make any money if everybody's off work. That's not what this pandemic was about. It was about a virus that was viral to be exposed to anywhere, anytime, any age, any race, any place. You're 100% right that the, these corporations have to be held accountable. And therefore, you have to look at Warren Truck or many of these other factories as a, as a crime scene. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what happened? And the information that you could give, your family can give, what you remember that Catherine was saying, the way you've been treated afterwards is the evidence that is necessary. And also to encourage, as you say, more workers who's, who lost loved ones to come forward and to, to build a very powerful case. Mm -hmm. That's all we want in the end, to so be accountable. Everyone has to show their accountability. It doesn't matter if you're in a marriage, you're in a relationship, or you're the CEO or president of a well-known corporation. Everyone still has to be accountable for what they do. Right. You build a, you build a, build a business, you know what undertakes the business. You know responsibilities that come with the business. You know what li liabilities that you have with that business and corporation. And this is not anything small. You know, this is not a new company or anything of that sort. So... They take no responsibility for the deaths mm -hmm. they incur. Also, I just wanted to add that the the pandemic is still raging. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it lives in human hosts and is has been allowed to mutate into other strains and variants, the Omicron variant, uh, which are more infective. Mm -hmm. And the truth about whether I mean, they have stopped even uh, the government, the Biden administration has stopped uh, proper reporting on hospitalizations, on infections. And in order to support their narrative that uh, this pandemic is is becoming an endemic, just like a cold. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it, so this crime is still going on it continues and has to be fought at least they have a count on every day now you don't hear about it yeah right that's not an accident mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how many uh, victims of covid have are you aware of your own family or friends <laughs> well we had my mother was March the 27th. Her mother in Ohio passed the day after we buried my mother, May 13th, 2020. Her mother contracted it in Ohio and she went through the whole phase of the ventilator and all for 37 days in the hospital. They did a clap out for her and the next day she passed from COVID. Then her sister in the same household in Ohio was in a hospital for 15, 17 days during that same time in March and April. Um, I tested positive. My sister tested positive. Um, and the crazy thing, my dad and my mother lived in the same house together. He tested negative. When she passed, he tested negative. And she was positive. No, so it's 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 been... Close family and friends, at least 10 in, in 2020. My, I lost my, my other sister-in-law died in Arkansas, Eugene's wife. Mm -hmm. My brother's wife, she died from it. They had did a, uh, like a memorial thing for like the, when it first, first happened. They oh, yeah, like in August. On, on, uh, on Belal. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was like, we did the little boat around all the way around. They had big pictures of everybody with their name on their big pictures. It was still, it was people on there. I was looking at them like, I ain't know he dead. I ain't know she dead. Yeah. Like, oh, I said I lost time. And, and that, that was that was, that was August of 2020 when they did uh -huh. that drive through through Belle Isle, and 
Wow. In August, it was at least 50 Chrysler employees that was out there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And it was like it was like pictures of like the whole almost the whole bill. Mm-hmm. Well, w- one thing we haven't asked about is you did paint a picture of your uh, of Catherine. And <laughs> what was she like? What what was what did she love? What uh, what kind of person was she? She was a, a humble person. She was strong. Everybody loved her. Because she always, you know, smiled. Everybody loved her smile. She stepped up when I got sick. She took care of everything. She was just a beautiful person. The Lord blessed me to have her for almost 50 years. And I'm, I'm, I still got it. I'll always have it in my heart. And I tell everybody, we still married. We never got a divorce. And that's my wife. And I'm going to keep on counting the years as long as I'm alive. Amazing cook. Amazing person. You know, it was just like she was everything, everything that a, a son or a daughter can ask for as a mother. She was awesome. She was known as Miss Cat. Miss Kitty Cat. Like I said, all she did was ever smile. Uh, she was there for everybody, her co-workers. As we said in the other article, she would bake cakes. She sold cakes and made cakes. If it was somebody's birthday, she was at the at the plant making sure they had a birthday party. She was a loving mother, a wonderful grandmother. She had a granddaughter that she never met. On the day she passed her daughter-in-law, and my brother was going to tell her that they was pregnant. And that daughter is a year and a half now, so she never got a chance to meet her. She's a woman that would never be forgotten. She's a woman that we would never let her legacy go. And that's why I would not stop until Chrysler answers me to Chrysler. Until Chrysler acknowledges they're wrong. Because she was not just a body. It was too many days that I've seen this woman still smiling, body hurting, and, and still will go and make it there to get to work. You know, weekends, holidays. She was there. She did it. And for them to come at the end and not acknowledge her and not be accountable, just to simply say, yes, it, it was there. I, I, yes, Corona was here. No flowers, no, no. cards, nothing for the film, nothing. She was a good woman. Catherine Pace. Like I said, this could have been prevented. The vast majority of those who have died from COVID are from the working class. To claim that auto workers were essential, they had to be inside the factories. Why? Yeah. I thought it was essential to be living. Right. Mm -hmm. For them, it was essential to make profits. The main way workers have been kept atomized and separated is by the concealing of information, Mm -hmm. which workers have tried to overcome through social media and and so on. We have a newsletter, which we call the uh, Auto Workers Newsletter, the World Socialist website, Auto Worker Newsletter. It's very well known at at the factory gate. That's what I heard when I asked one person. I said, have you ever heard of WSWS? They was like, oh, yeah. The Chrysler tries to tell us not to communicate with them. The union tells us not to communicate. Don't leak out anything to them. I said, thanks. You, you helped me just by saying that. 
That's what Sharice told me. Too. Yeah. 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 They said that they Christ warns them, threatens them That's not right. to speak, not to give any information to you. I said, thank you so much. It seems that um, many, many, many other workers need to tell their stories. What would you say to you, to the other Chrysler workers just to encourage them to do that? Now I would ask them to just come and step forward with us that we can get more of us together that can show to prove that it's not us just talking about it. It actually happened and we need accountability to be taken. That's right. Because if there's no accountability, they'll do it again. Been doing it for the last two years still. So it's time not to be um, quiet and, and peaceful. It's time to raise some hell. We're doing it for Catherine. We're doing it for the 20 million across the world. Mm-hmm. You know, their, their lives mattered. Yeah. They really, yeah. really mattered. 